Hi folks, welcome to Public Administration Theory Class 4. Um, in this session, we will deal with uh, the idea of public administration and uh, bureaucracy, the notion of how uh, democracy and bureaucracy clash or uh, how they can be in tension with each other. So this is a very real problem as uh, we are seeing today in the current political situation as well as uh, in previous contexts. This is uh, the real tension between the need for order uh, and structure, which is essentially what bureaucracy is about, and about the need for uh, participation, the need for participatory governance, need for inclusion of people's voices, uh, themes that have been talking about from class one. And uh, essentially, as we can imagine, these would be in, in tension, these would be in conflict uh, most of the time, if not always. So one of the biggest challenges for any bureau bureaucrat is to manage these tensions, to overcome them, and to make sure that uh, the laws and rules that are being made uh, are uh, in tandem with the principles of uh, fair play, principles of justice, and equity. So these are some, some tensions that we'll examine through this uh, session and see how uh, bureaucrats can overcome them using theories, using examples, uh, that you know that I've used in this uh, session. Hopefully, we'll get a better understanding of the issues at stake. So, uh, one of the key seminal thinkers that has written about bureaucracy and about governance more broadly, uh, though I don't think he really used that term, is Max Weber, the German uh, German sociologist. So, uh, Weber's uh, entire body of work is essentially about uh, the rationalization of work, uh, in the sense of how uh, societies move from being sort of arbitrarily based to more rule-based uh, you know behavior as well as conduct and how organizations adapt these and um, as we pointed out earlier how these uh, roles lead to specialization of labor and with the overriding uh, goal of being efficient so that becomes sort of the modus uh, vivendi or modus operandi of these organizations that's why they exist that's how they operate so uh, Weber's real concern, uh, you know, through his writings and research was uh, to really examine and argue about the dehumanization of life with bureaucracy because the more rules you follow, the more uh, orders you take, uh, he argued that the more uh, inhuman people might become or, or it might have a detrimental effect on how people live their lives. So his famous expression is uh, is the one that uh, is at the bottom of the slide, which, where he said that uh, people might enter into an iron cage of rationality. So uh, where you know their thinking is so boxed, the thinking is so uh, limited that they're not able to uh, think beyond just the arbitrary rules that are created. And uh, if we take a step further from this, one can even argue that bureaucracy can lead to oligarchy or rule by the bureaucrats which might actually lead uh, to a harming of democracy as we understand it. So uh, again, Weber is a very important thinker. So any essays you can find by him, any books, uh, any anything that by, uh, that's written by Weber is, 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 is actually pretty good for you to understand public administration theory. So I found this again by the grace of the internet, um, this very important quote uh, where he says, the fate of our times is characterized by rationalization and intellectualization, and above all, by the disenchantment of the world. So, uh, meaning that uh, the world that we see uh, as being over-rationalized can really lead to some really negative consequences for for all of us. So, uh, I mean, I grew up with with Yes Minister growing up in India. That's a comedy show, a British comedy, which. Uh, revolves around a minister and his very clever bureaucrat friend or rather subordinate so pause this video for a second uh, sorry this yeah my video and watch that video uh, it's not too long and you get a sense of what the the kind of dynamics that exist between these two people and what it says about uh, elected representative as well as a bureaucrat who's appointed by him or by others like him so have a look and uh, if you're interested and if this picks your curiosity yeah you can watch yes minister on youtube I pretty much all the episodes are, are available for free. So uh, I, I that think that's a good intersection to really point out to the tensions between bureaucracy and democracy and the absurdity that it leads to at many points of time. So uh, 
it has another reading which I don't think is included in your text, but is is based off of what uh, Weber has written. So in which uh, the scholar uh, Downs argues uh, that it's he's basically talking about um, how bureaus or agencies are formed and how they become efficient and what's their life cycle really. I mean, you could you could use this example for. Uh, any institution, for instance, I mean, in the next couple of slides, I, I talk about, uh, you know, churches or universities and other institutions that have come about through what Weber also called routinization of charisma, as in uh, most institutions, as you, you may know, are formed by one or two charismatic individuals, right? I mean, private institutions or even nation states, for instance. I mean, think of uh, Gandhi, think of... Uh, uh, George Washington, think of ma in many other people or smaller figures who may have formed a bureau. I mean, think of the founder of FBI, uh, J. Edgar Hoover. So think the, all these people are very charismatic, but the charisma itself does not sustain an institution, right? I mean, it may start it, but it has to be routinized. It has to be made into rule-based, uh, efficient networks, efficient ways of doing things. Only then does it become a system that might have the potential to survive. So he argues that uh, they uh, a bureau survive because there's a nature of uh, self-preservation, which is at the core. And this is also true of nation states. I mean, if you think of a country or a nation state as we as we know it today, uh, these the entire they they are built around the idea of self-preservation, right? So they move functions between organizations. They create pressure on others. Uh, they they deal in all kinds of things, both positive and negative. Uh, in order to survive and uh, also they try to avoid conflict where possible uh, bureaus more than nation states so this is roughly the the life cycle of any bureau I mean if you look at how uh, agencies are built and how they are structured I think these insights will be helpful for you to think through uh, what kind of uh, an organization a bureaucracy is really so again, based off my previous uh, example of J. Edgar Hoover, I'd like you to have a look at this uh, short clip on uh, J. Edgar Hoover, uh, who many considered uh, to be a zealot. I mean, uh, people have many, pers many, many perspectives of Edgar Hoover. Uh, of course, not all of them are positive, and I would argue that yes, he wasn't uh, an angel among amidst us. However, one cannot argue that uh, he built a organization that exists today, which is a very important arm of the U.S. government, so an agency of the government rather, so Federal Bureau of Investigations. So uh, as much as we might like or not like FBI, uh, you, you can't argue that it's an effective and well-oiled machine that functions uh, not always uh, to achieve its end objectives as we want it, but it does do its job to safeguard the, the homeland. So let's have a look at this and also see what kind of a bureaucrat Edgar Hoover was and uh, what really made his personality and uh, his whole method effective. So uh, I think it, it, this is a good case study of a bureaucrat and also the agency itself is a great example of an agency that you know illustrates a few key points that we're trying to understand here. And uh, lastly, I want to wrap up this session with uh, uh, US Information Agency, another, you know, uh, of a fabulous agency that uh, was sort of transformed into the state, what we know as the State Department. So actually, somebody I know worked for USIA, uh, you know, uh, around the time of the Cold War, and then moved on to actually, uh, you know, work for other uh, universities and other institutions. But uh, her name is Nancy Snow. Professor Nancy Snow has written quite a lot about USIA itself. But this book is is uh, a different one by a different scholar. Uh, which talks about the rise and fall of uh, U.S. Information Agency. Again, this th this agency was created basically to create war propaganda for the United States during the Cold War, and its functions shifted to uh, not just propaganda, but uh, you could say diplomacy. Hence, it was transformed or uh, create you know folded into state what we know as the State Department today. So another you know classic example of agencies shifting forms. Uh, realigning the mission and sort of uh, moving forward with, with the work that they're supposed to do, but in a slightly different shape and form. Uh, and as I pointed out, you know, this is this coincided with the move for uh, shifting the rhetoric around Cold War because post, uh, say, uh, fall of the Berlin Wall, uh, most people accepted that, you know, the Cold War is over.
we don't really need to have an agency that creates uh, you know more propaganda against the Soviet Union so let's think about uh, you know uh, why religious institutions say like the Catholic Church or the university model as we understand it today uh, have survived the test of time so what has what are the factors that have led to its longevity as as an institution so pause this video for a few uh, minutes and write down a few questions since we're not able to do it in person uh, write down a few points and see uh, what you come up with uh, i have included the case analysis of nevada wetlands uh, please read it thoroughly and you're required to write about this so go ahead and write your 500 word brief uh, but we will discuss this in class on January 2nd. All right. So uh, this is all I have for you today. I hope to see you on January 2nd. Uh, and uh, I will take this discussion up from there. Thank you so much.